All right, welcome everybody. It is Sunday, June 4th, the day after my dog's birthday. We are here. <laughs> uh, I'm Justin, we have Trista, and we have... Farzi. Farzi, we got Farzi. Uh, special guest this week, she, Farzi's from uh, Tehran, Iran, yes. and we want to cover some of our, some of, just some stuff, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty ignorant whenever it comes to... Uh, life. Life, so we're just going <laughs> to ask some questions. Uh, but today's brought to you by... Uh, Skilled Creations. This is uh, Chase and Tressa. They are members at Greenfire and they come up with these great bottles and I just wanted to advertise them. You're going to start seeing around the gym and uh, support local business. So check them out. They are Skilled Creations and they're on Instagram. Great yeah. family. I'll, uh, I'll put some links or at least pictures so you guys can uh, look them up whenever you want to. Uh, Trish, do you want to talk about your week? Sure. Uh, week was amazing. We started out Monday with Murph. We had the Murph challenge at the gym. We had over 50 people. Yeah. That was the biggest event that we've had to date for Murph. That's awesome. And that was our ninth year, ninth year yeah. doing it. We had, uh, I think, the youngest kid there was probably around three. And uh, JP still holds the title. Did he win? For the oldest of 68. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we had from three to 68. Pretty amazing. Pretty that's, incredible. That's amazing. Um, I've, seen, I've seen Murph. Uh, pop its head up on social media the last couple of years and it seems to be getting bigger and bigger and it's nice to see some stuff brought to light brought to light do you want to tell us about murph sure uh, murph is a workout that was um made into a hero workout and it is in memory and honor of uh, lieutenant michael murphy and he did the ultimate sacrifice he uh gave his own life to save he ended up uh, calling in, I think it was in Afghanistan, he had to call in a call to get okay. help and for his, uh, his men and one survived. And I believe the movie is called The Lone Survivor. Yeah. And that is in relation to, to Michael Murphy. So Hunter pull up, uh, one mile run, 100 pull ups, 200 push ups, 300 squats and a last mile run. And if you can do it RX, it's in a weight vest. Okay. But the cool thing about CrossFit is it can be modified for everyone. I said there was three year old and a sixty eight year old. Um, we all did different variations of the workout, and you can break it up into chunks. So you didn't have to do a hundred pull ups, two hundred push ups, three hundred push ups in a row. You can break them up into sections, and um, takes usually around anywhere from the fastest time is I think thirty some minutes, and the you know up to over an hour. Sometimes yeah. seventy minutes. And the you like the pull ups and stuff like that. They're assisted with bands and stuff like that. For the yeah, if you if you needed to, we did assisted pull ups. We did ring rows. We did jumping pull ups. There were all kinds of different variations to to get the same same stim same stimulus of the workout, but um, and with feeling uh, feeling like you put in a lot of work because you yeah. do, <laughs> and uh, just having a sense of pride for finishing something yes. hard in a in a room full of people just doing something really hard together. It's a really cool feeling. So it's a little bonding experience too, and just uh, you, you kind of feed off of other people's energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Um, Farzi, what about your week? Did you do anything exciting this week? I did the Murph challenge. You did the Murph challenge. <laughs> Good. Good for you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And um, uh, on top of that, I uh, I'm dog sitting a very cute, cuddly <laughs> golden retriever. So good, <laughs> like that's good. the highlight of my week. As well. <laughs> that is a I know. Week. As soon as, as soon as she got here, Jers, my dog, just kind of like rubbed up against you, and it's like it was like love at first sight. You yeah. guys both. Oh, she's so cute, <laughs> yeah. and like her fur is so beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> so soft. soft. We we got um so like my week we got a little bit of bad news to start the week. We found out that Jers had a mast cell tumor. In which uh, uh, I'll put some stuff on the screen, but it's you know it's 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 not good. It's usually usually terminal. Um, she's she turned eleven yesterday, and uh, we did get the good news that the ter the tumor was taken out with no with nothing left. It's mm -hmm. not her lymph nodes, anything like that. Um, she's going to start a very light, expensive chemo this week. Um, once once it comes in and. It doesn't, from what I understand, it doesn't affect dogs like it does people. And it's in pill form, it's once a month, and it's going to have minimal, minimal negatives with, with the upside uh, is, is going to be pretty positive. And that puts her right in line with like the normal life expectancy of a dog. So I'm pretty, uh, I'm, uh, uh, as far as the bad news, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the result of it anyways. 
But then my day, my week got so much better. I saw a guy on a bicycle riding, carrying a bag of beans. <laughs> and it was actually, <laughs> it was actually pork. It turns out I knew him and I didn't know I knew him. So that, it was, oh. it was a pretty funny, funny little exchange back and forth. And then uh, Thursday night I saw Chappelle. I went to see uh, Dave Chappelle. It was pretty, uh, pretty awesome, pretty awesome mm -hmm. experience. My brother took me for his birthday. And uh, then yesterday I worked for Surf Pro and I, I went to a baby shower in the morning and I worked a truck pole in the evening. How was the baby shower? It was it was right. It was a community baby shower. Um, oh. Indiana Head Start. Megan Jablonski put it put it on. And it was nice. It was it was it was good to see everybody. Um, like the diaper drive thing. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. that's great. That's yeah, great. Good I'll, for you. Yeah, it was it was actually really good. And I, I'll try to snag some pictures off off of her and put um put on the screen too but she did a great job i it was it was good to see and the truck pull last night was the, it it was the same same thing it was to raise money for uh commodore and hope fire department so it it's really good to see the people in the community and we also had a community csp meeting community support and uh we let the gentleman know that we there's not enough money there's just not enough money in this area for uh any sort of group that tries to better the community. And you know what's frus frustrating about it is uh, you didn't make it to the steps when they, we had the walk, um, when they do the courthouse yeah. talk, and they had said there are still millions of dollars sitting, waiting to be allocated and how to be spent, and, and it's just like everyone's fighting over how to spend the money. Yeah. So the government has the money. It's there. It's and there. I, they just don't know how to allocate it out. And we have so many resources in our people. I really feel that our people are the number one resource in the entire world. Um, there's people with psych degrees. There's people with sociology degrees. There's people with life experience that could step in and help. And I told the guy, I said, you can, you can ask for $300 for pizza for a party, but you can't ask for a dollar to pay someone to host the party. Yeah. And it's <laughs> unbelievable. And stuff, places like us, like we have the gym. Do it again. I'll see it again. <laughs> uh, places like we have the gym, so we don't need to ask for money for the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, which we, we might we might start. Like, right, we do have to keep the lights on. Yeah, right? we, we do. So we can't we can't get money because it's our, we already it's there. So it's just it's so frustrating. I told him you have to have a master's degree to make fifteen dollars an hour. There's no possible way that anyone wants to. They said there's such a high turnover in employees. Well, create a good work environment and pay people to do it. And guess what? You're never going to have a problem with employees. Mm -hmm. So I, it's I, it's frustrating. And I'm sure the guys heard this a thousand times. And he came last year to the same thing. Uh, didn't hear from him after, and there was no results made. So it's it's awesome. It's great. It's really it's really good to see. You want to say something? The mental health world is hard, and it's hard because too there are a lot of people. I mean, we've seen people in local community that need help yes and they also have to recognize they have a problem and and i think that that's where a lot of times where people struggle with mental health issues you know there was uh, a person in the local community had been arrested and taken in multiple 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 times for evaluations and would just be released and it, it was just a constant turnover and i think that people eventually become cold to it yes and um we need to have better resources and better allies, even with the police. I think our Indiana Police Department fantastic. is doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Because they, you would say the if like that person's name was brought up, they're like, oh, it's so sad. It's so hard because they know that the person needs help, but you can't force people to take care of their mental health. You can't force it. That's where it's a it's a struggle. And Officer Mike Rako comes every single week or every single month to <clears throat> to the CSP and the few like there's been times we all missed, but he's always sent somebody in, in his place. Mm -hmm. And it's really good to see. And you can tell the empathy and whatnot on his face when he hears this stuff. Or he like when we were talking about some of the things he you, you'd see him shake his head like it's unbelievable that a woman said, I want a place to, that I can go and hang out and be with like minded people and whatnot. And the gentleman said, there's a drop in center. I'm like, it's a 12 by 12 room with a dusty ass couch and you're sitting by sweaty people playing a week. Yeah. You know, and it's great in theory. And I haven't been back since um, or I've been back a couple of times since Kendra left. And she did a great job with the limited res resources she had. But she left and went to PSCCU because there's more money in banking, obviously, than there is in mental health. Yes. And it's just the the 
it, it's it's unbelievable. We did get good news though. IRMC is going to open a uh, facility where it's a it's a walk in to get psychiatric help, and uh, as that comes up, we'll we'll update on it. But man, I I wanted to start a walk in facility for uh, for the for the gym for social gatherings for art for classes for life skills stuff like that, and uh, I think that's what I want to do. I don't I don't think I want to do like a I mean I, I want to take all the steps but I, I think ultimately that's that's my goal and uh, I don't know how I'm gonna do it but we'll figure it out one way or another. Yeah, there are different ways to make things happen and you just have to get creative. Yeah, uh, a lot of the nonprofits that I'm seeing in different areas. They've became creative on their own because they had to and they've yeah. uh, tapped into local resources and local businesses and local communities and some of them actually just stopped even trying to get it with the government the local to, government to get money yeah and then if you do get it from the government you have to do exactly what they say or you're not allowed to so it's your so your hands are tied so i want to try to get independent funding and whatever whatever that means and i think uh i think both of us you're doing a great job at the gym and it's we'll, we'll get we'll get there we'll get there and if we don't we'll try and, and we, we talk about like and we're kind of segueing into this so we'll talk about it yeah. um just watching what the the environment at the gym can do for adults that are just trying to make physical changes in their life or live a healthier life and the mindset changes that come uh when farzi first walked into the gym um she wouldn't look at any of us <laughs> she was so quiet we did a i did a, a month free promotion i wanted to give people a chance to try something out and she walked in and her head was down she wouldn't look at us and she said her name and that class was loaded full of like my, my loudest people, uh, my wildest, <laughs> loudest people. And I think the, the coolest thing about our gym is everyone has a freedom to just be who they are. Yeah. And if it's loud, if it's crazy, if it's whatever, who they are, they're allowed to be that there. And she left and I was like, well, shit, I'm never going to see her again. <laughs> and then she came back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and Best decision ever. Yeah, I mean, like, um, yeah, the supportive people, um, people that uh, help you to uh, um, be yourself. Yes, yeah, and be, be yourself around them, and uh, they they are just there for cheering you up. So yeah, so I guess it's a very it's a very good uh, experience. Like, it's a very good. Um, I, I always say that like my time at the gym, like the hour that I spend at the gym is like th those are my highlights of the week yeah that's, that's, <laughs> that's amazing that's yes. great yeah. i will never forget the day she walked in and she's like hello everyone and i was like <laughs> yes <laughs> uh how long have you been going there then since february or january, january. Okay. january. okay so we yeah. started at the same time then. oh really yeah okay people like you and chase and uh you know dean and kevin seeing them show up every single week mm -hmm. and uh Dr. Darcy and all those people. It's it's just it's good. It, it's, it's a very good good place, and it's it's just it's just welcoming. And like I couldn't, I only ate the other day at like ten a.m. ate a pork chop, <laughs> and that was all I ate. And we were doing the the one workout, and like I just I couldn't do it. Like I physically didn't have any strength. Were you bike. riding around the uh, on your bike with a pork chop? Seen <laughs> it or <laughs> that picture of you? It was me. <laughs> Listen, if you see the real picture from far away, it's like you see me from 2005. Like, right, and I'm like, did I see myself in a time loop carrying beans? I think the best thing, though, is if you do miss some days, people reach out to you, yeah. and not in a yes. judgment and shaming way mm -hmm. of a, hey, we missed you. Like, yes. Come back. We missed you. We're everything going okay. We're concerned about you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we saw some people that started at the same time as as, a, as we did, and they're no longer coming to the 5 p.m. classes. They're coming to the 5 a.m. classes. Yes. And that's a huge step, coming, starting your day out of 5 a.m. working out. I, yes. mm, we yeah. had uh, John, he changed his work schedule so he can come uh, more days a week, yeah. and he can go before work, and he doesn't have to miss any of his kids' practices after work. And he also helps coach sports for his kids and is a super involved parent and yes. also uh, is doing good things for him and his family and his longevity. Yeah. And Erica, too. Erica yeah. Oh, yes. Job. Yes. Yeah. Just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. She's, she started doing the, yes. the morning classes, too. We started She's, together. I remember that. Yeah. Yes. Right, Chase, right. too. And Chase yes. uh, finished his marathon. He did yeah. the marathon, did great. 
and now he is uh, hitting three days a week. And this week, actually four. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he That's hit a good. Saturday. Yeah. Uh, new guy Adam showed up this week. He did a he did a good job. And then he texted me yesterday. He ran a five k, and he's like, my legs were so dead. He said they were just so heavy, but then he said it was his best time so far. Yeah, so, good. Cool. Yeah. See? That's awesome. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I, I love how I, I am not a competitive person. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, going to like uh, gyms and things like that can be a little uh, overwhelming for me. Like if people have like this kind of extreme competitive uh, attitude. Um, but that's one thing that I love about uh, our gym and people in uh, our community that um, everyone is like trying to help you to go forward. But it's like I'm competing with myself. I'm yes. getting myself uh, better uh, to be stronger, to have more self-confidence. I like that like uh, because I'm not... Uh, at all a competitive person and i don't feel like that uh, at the gym at all so good, it good. helps me a lot and there are some that they thrive off of it they all like text each other throughout the day like would oh, you get yes, coming definitely. in and, yes. but, but everyone is different exactly and then, um, so you can be yourself like i mean yeah. if you if you like that kind of uh, yes. challenging thing or like competitive thing uh, there's a room for it yes. like there are people that they will follow with you yep exactly <laughs> uh and uh, new jasmine's doing a great job too i just want yes. to say that out there um we're going to take a two second break because I'm starting to get a little static in the in the earphone. So hold on a second. OK. All right. We're going to talk a little bit about So for, I've been all week. I've been singing. Come on, Farsi girl. Farsi world. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay. Good, thank you. I was like, can we edit that part? <laughs> Especially, you hate the sound of your own voice. It's like, eh. uh, let's talk about let's talk about you. Um, where are you where are you from? That you said you said Iran. What what part of the world? What what brought you here? Tell us every single thing about you. Sure. Um, <laughs> so my name is Farzana. Okay. And uh, Farzi is a short form of it. Like it's my nickname. And uh, I'm from, uh, my family originally is from the north part of Iran. Okay. And uh, it's uh, close to Caspian Sea. Um, then when I was uh, one years old, uh, one year old, we moved to, my family moved to Tehran. And uh, my family is in Tehran now. Uh, I grew up in Tehran. And I consider myself that I'm from Tehran. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I love Tehran. Right, right, <laughs> right. Right. Good, good, good. So uh, what, how old were you when you came here? And is Pennsylvania the only, Indiana, Pennsylvania, the only place you've lived in the States? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Pennsylvania is the only place that I lived in the uh, United States. And uh, I um, came here January 2016. Okay, so you've been here, been here long enough to get a good idea of, yes. of, of culture. And yeah, I was twenty nine when I uh, came here. Okay, all right, yes. cool. So you you uh, you spent some adult years in in Iran too. Yeah, where of you course. Got the got yes. the experience because in here in here your child years and your adult years are way different as far as as far as cultural things and how, mm-hmm. how you can do it. And I've I watched some videos this this week. I um I wanted to talk to you personally about this stuff but man I the first one I clicked on there was a young lady that um, didn't wear her hijab right and hijab's the traditional head yes um, that is the recent uh, uh, incident that happened Uh, it was uh, September 2022 and uh, uh, I mean a tragic tragic she was executed for not wearing it um, oh, I thought that you were talking about Mahsa Amini. Uh, she, oh, uh, Mahsa uh, uh, was the one, September 2022, she was arrested by the hijab police because she was not wearing her headscarf uh, appropriately based on the regime's rules. So she was and, wearing it? Uh, yes, she was wearing, but like her hair was shown. She was arrested by the hijab police and uh, she was uh, uh, beaten and uh, she was killed uh, in their custody. That's, that's why. And that was the start of all the, all the uh, protests that they have been continuing. And like it was the um, uh, start of, now they call it uh, the revolution, the woman life uh, freedom revolution. Yes. 
Yeah, uh, I saw you kind of started wearing some gear to the um, to the gym too when that kind of started, and it, and it's good to see the hairbands. Yeah, uh, the three hairbands. Yes. I that was that was wild. I I don't. What's what's um? Are you, do you fear for yourself whenever you're walking down the street and? in Iran if you're if you're not wearing that like you said there's hijab police well yes there is hijab police you cannot uh, not wear a head scarf uh, and um, because uh, after the 1979 revolution they put uh, the new regime uh, put that in the law that all women doesn't matter uh, their uh, practices uh, doesn't matter their school of uh, thoughts like they have to have uh, hijab what oh, age like, um, does this start? Um, it starts from the age seven when you go to school. So okay. you, you can, like, a woman cannot go to school unless they wear uh, a uniform and the um, headscarf. Um, okay. So a girl cannot go to school if they don't. Um, Around and, the home, what do they have? Do, can you wear regular clothes at yes, home? Okay. Yes, um, or like uh, something that uh, women... Um, uh, has uh, women have always been doing is that like uh, this is not a recent thing since last September that they are fighting uh, like uh, for their rights uh, for the right of wearing uh, what they want and other uh, rights but since the beginning uh, like in uh, I think it was like a year after the revolution it was either 1979 or 1980 uh, that this rule uh, was applied. Uh, women are uh, protesting. Women are trying to um, change it, but um, uh, they have always um, been treated brutally and arrested, uh, imprisoned, um, tortured. Um, and unfortunately, in the uh, past couple of months, uh, raped uh, oh. in custody. Uh, um, just for requesting for uh, their basic, basic human, human rights. rights. Uh, yes. What? Um... So sorry. So to answer your question, like, like you, a woman is supposed to completely cover a hair, like, and have like long sleeves, long uh, pants, uh, not show skin as well. But women uh, show their hair, like they walk the streets, like uh, trying to fight it and yes. recently like uh it's been a couple of months that they just wear whatever they know the consequences they know what Ugh. is happening to them and they're doing it they just go out they just rebelling. with whatever yeah. they they want to wear uh what are the is are all men against it i would assume some women are tradition traditionalists i guess you would want to say and they they do it like what's the what's the sure. what's the man take on this um, the... about women for sure i mean there are some women that they believe like i mean this is uh something that they believe in and i respect that like everyone respects yeah. oh, that yeah, if yeah. they if they believe it but about men um um i mean i can talk about for example my family and like i my uh father my brothers like they are also like this and they don't believe in uh such a thing okay. and uh i never i personally never felt the force from like a family that i have to like um wear like the scarf or i have to cover like that was for me a lot of men they they were they are like that um, and the good, the very beautiful thing about the woman life uh, freedom and like Mahsa Amini uh, revolution is that um, a lot of men joined good. women good, and good, good, good. they are supporting them. If a woman uh, goes out um, with whatever they like to wear, a, a man, like a, a friend, a brother, a father, a husband is walking with them Company. supporting them right. and uh it was actually very recently i heard uh that um uh, there was this thing because there are also some restrictions for men like uh that men uh they have to they, they cannot wear shorts for example in public wow. so they were like okay if women are like removing their headscarf if they want we are going to wear shorts and we are going to walk with them uh the streets yeah because the where does the idea or the ideology of, of a hot job come from? Is it a, is it a cultural or religious thing or is it just? It's what? not cultural at all uh, okay. because before the revolution, um, 
um, Muslims uh, and uh, non-Muslims, whoever like wanted to wear it, like they they could wear it. Whoever didn't want to wear it, they wouldn't wear it. Like they they had the right to choose what they wanted to wear. Um, so, and it's mostly a kind of ideology of the current regime uh, okay. in the country. It's um, a lot of. Um, the regime says that it's uh, an Islamic rule, um, but a lot of uh, Muslim scholars, uh, they um, um, uh, mentioned many times that this is not uh, based on Islamic rules and it's just like a way of this regime controlling women and showing power, showing off power and limiting uh, uh, half of the society. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, yeah. Way, of, it's a way of stripping women of their identity. Yes. And if, yes. if you don't have an identity, yes. you can't. Yeah. Exactly, because that's, um, and like, uh, the, the, that's one of the symbols uh, for this regime. Uh, and um, it's like the controlling part is also there. And also they want to uh, also show off to other uh, countries mm -hmm. Their ideology, one of the things that it is uh, visible, like uh, uh, people around the world can see, um, is the headscarf. So it can be also a kind of symbol for them uh, to carry on with that. Okay. How cowardly is it that they are killing women and yes. saying, like, look at this power. Yes. Like, <laughs> you know, yes. I mean, and like, yeah, uh, it's like, like they, yeah. they, they constantly, uh, like, they always have these argues because recently they actually increased the uh, the hijab police uh, in the country um and they made like the rules uh, very strict regarding hijab and they constantly like uh, say that like this is uh, protecting women like hijab helps protecting women <laughs> but then they are killing people to say that like we're protecting and they're also you. raping them in yes. custody which is yes. not doing any so of those things it's not it's not anything religious like um they are far away from any kind of uh, school of thoughts religion anything yeah it's like the husband that beats his wife and then says i only do this because i love you yes <laughs> exactly yeah. yes uh, yeah, that's that's incredible. So when you when you came to the states, like when you when you found out you were going to be able to come to the states, was it just like an exhale? I'm sure you were sad in a lot of ways because uh, you know missing your family and stuff like that. But when you walk the streets at, in in Indiana, you just you don't think about it. You feel very safe. You look yes. whatnot. Yes, definitely. I mean, um, uh, that's a very important uh, safety uh, issue, or yeah, like absolutely. the feeling of uh, being safe, like. For sure, uh, it is very different, um, and uh, um, you're like I'm like I'm not like scared that like oh I'm uh, going to school I need to uh, make sure that like based on uh, the um, idea of the person who is sitting in that van for the job police, I am wearing something appropriate or like uh, today will I be uh, arrested or like will I go to school and like they won't let me inside school because of my uh, uh, clothes, because of my makeup. If I go to work and I would be uh, sent home because I'm wearing lipstick, huh. uh, lipstick or something. So yes, it's like, it's definitely, it's like a um, safety thing. Like This is safe. such an important thing to talk about because especially here and you know, Indiana PA, like, we don't we've never had those kind of fears no we... these are things that we never had to think about i mean i the biggest fear i ever had was going to high school and having to put my hands down and make sure my shorts were long enough <laughs> and all you would do is get your parents called and they would bring you clothes if they oh, were yes. too short yes. yeah that was the worst that we've ever really had to fear yes. in school as you know yes. as girls and it, that's... yes um and then i mean like it's not only like the fear that like you might get arrested or something like that. It's also um, like, you know, like you uh, will be um, excluded from like you wouldn't receive some benefits. Um, like sometimes like uh, you want some jobs like I like for a teaching job, for example, um, I wanted to be uh, a school teacher. But the problem was that you have to uh, show uh, and prove that you are a supporter of the ideology of the regime to be able to get like a job that you like to 
um, most of like the jobs like you have to go through interviews not because they want to make sure that uh, you are an expert in the job that you uh, want to uh, have but you are the follower of the ideology they don't want you teaching free thoughts to the, your the children no of course not of course not we have uh, there's a lot of people here too that that think that uh college professors are brainwashed and brainwashing kids into being more left than they are than they, yeah they, and it's not it's not nearly the same it's like the problems we have are legitimately first world problems like we had uh, tanko from ghana on here a couple weeks ago and in you know we we go to the fridge and it's like oh man all i have is water to drink <laughs> and like they people you know there's so many people in the world struggling just to get clean yes. clean water yes and definitely I, we're, we're such a yes. we're such a fortunate culture and we take that for granted a, a lot like the the complaints we were making earlier we have the luxury we have the luxury of having a mental health movement Yes, that that's huge, and, and we talk about our previous generations <clears throat> not taking mental health very seriously. Well, my parents were born early fifties. Their parents were raised during the depression. They didn't have time to worry about mental yeah. health. <laughs> and speaking on uh, mental health, um, do you mind if we talk about how the attacks on the women and stuff is that affecting your mental health? even though you're living here in the states yeah sure um i mean for sure it it is affecting me like uh and it's affecting me um um i wanted to say like harshly let's say harshly it's affecting okay. me because mm -hmm. um i um i always have this also battle mm -hmm. with myself that i am like uh well i i can I, i'm not doing anything uh, to uh, help the women in my country so that puts some extra feelings and pressure on me and then uh, when I want to feel like that oh I have the right to be uh, stressed uh, to uh, uh, have all these emotions then I'm like that so what about the women that they are in the country and men to be honest like I mean yeah. uh, we like the, the number of men that they were uh, arrested executed raped like during these past uh, seven months is way more than women uh and like uh so i i feel like that i need to also mention that young people in iran they uh they they are requesting for their basic human rights so it puts extra pressure on me like um but um you mentioned for example about like my uh, hair bands that i uh, do yeah. it with my country's uh, color uh, my uh, flag sorry yeah. um uh, my uh, country's flags colors uh, or like outside the gym uh, i wear like uh, my uh, uh, jeans and i uh, uh, wrote on them uh, with markers like uh, the hashtags that they are from like this recent uh, uh, movement i love that um so you know like we these are the ways that I am uh, trying to uh, do my part. Yeah, and you went to the this. walk. You went to the walk in DC. Yes, I went actually like uh, three times I went uh, to DC to uh, attend. And once uh, I went to Pittsburgh. We had it uh, at the very beginning, uh, seven months ago. Uh, we had in uh, Pittsburgh once uh, the walk. And um, yes, and I went for the DC walk, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, you supported. Uh, as well and then um like i feel like i i feel like that's these are the things that i can do to Absolutely. help and uh, but it hurts that i cannot i cannot do more than that i i am like away it, it puts like a lot uh, of uh guilt like feelings guilt, guilt. Uh, it, it puts a lot of guilt there but the good thing is you are showing women that you can live a happy healthy life yes outside of the regime yes. and you're doing that but you're also not forgetting where you came from and you're supporting them yes and that guilt is it is a hard thing it's kind of like a survivor's guilt when someone passes yes. and then you're alive like you kind of have that same yes guilty feeling yes. but you're doing great things and you are going to the walks that's probably that's that is scary because you don't yeah. know if something could happen or yes actually i it is actually um, a little like um, scary to mm -hmm. go for those things because also like I am 
an uh, Iranian citizen and um, I am here just as a student with a student visa you know like uh, at some point I need to go back to my uh, country like when my studying uh, is done um, I don't know who is there in those uh, walks like because they are very good in identifying people like they uh, they do it like um, outside the country they do it inside the country I'm not an important person <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Like, okay, very but, important. But, now, right? <laughs> Does it scare you, like something like this? If something like this were to become public somehow, uh, does it scare you uh, to talk about this stuff publicly? Uh, like, no, because you're just reporting. You're also just yes, kind of no. reporting, and uh, it's, it's not. Um, and um, like, if it was like ten years ago, yes, I would be yeah. uh, scared. But now, you know, like. But that's one of the things of like being abroad, like studying abroad, uh, experiencing something new. Like you, you get to know that um, uh, I'm not that limited person. You get to understand that like, OK, this regime is trying to uh, show the world that they are very scary, but I still um, uh, have some rights. I still have some ways of uh, um, protesting against them and uh, requesting my rights and yeah. um um i i to be honest like uh like uh, uh i wouldn't care if yeah. <laughs> like if that would really? be dangerous yes yeah. do okay. you think that uh, you'll eventually go back to iran that's that's my hope yeah. um so i never want to lose that hope yeah right. um reality uh rational thinking says that right now i cannot yeah um, at the moment that it is impossible yeah. um, with the situation, with everything that is uh, happening inside the country and um, uh, how unstable is everything uh, in the country. Um, so that, that's, the, that's the reality for now. My hope is that I will be able to go back to my uh, country. Um, I just don't know how long it will take me. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's unbelievable. It, uh, hearing it firsthand too, and I, I, there's so much stuff that happens on the news, MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, yes. and you just don't, you don't know necessarily what to believe and what sort of, uh, of United States spin there is is on this stuff. So, but to hear it firsthand is just, just, just something incredible. Well, Farsi actually said she does not watch news stations from here. Yeah. Yes. Good. And and I Good. thought that Good. was like when I asked her about it, she's like, oh, I don't watch your U.S. news. Where do, where do you find news? Then? So um, I for sure do not watch the news from the uh, regime in Iran, okay. like uh, because um, uh, that's like the big thing from them actually. They uh control the media because they want the world to have a specific view about iran iranians and you know like they want everyone like to in the united states to think that we are like their enemies we don't like them which that's just like how they project the news like how they let the news out but uh we have had um Iranian news channels uh, or like uh, the uh, uh, broadcasters that they are outside uh, Iran and they are considered a free uh, kind of like uh, broadcasters, yes. like uh, free, free journalists. Yeah. And uh, a lot of journalists that they could not work in Iran, they uh, could not uh, uh, broadcast like an honest uh, news or uh, what they believed in uh they didn't have the freedom of speech they moved outside and they they, they are like uh, the the headquarters are in um emirates uh the headquarters are in uh, turkey uh, united kingdom uh united states uh, so like i follow the, those uh channels um so of course the internet um uh, has helped a lot. Sure. Uh, I wouldn't be able to get the news without having access to the internet, um, which is one of the things that the regime in Iran constantly attacks. They uh, shut down the internet because that's people's way of communicating with the world. I was I was just going to ask yes. you that. Yeah. They did that. Uh, well, because they they are doing something actually very similar uh, to a couple of countries that they apply this uh, idea. Um, they call it local internet. So they want to 
cut people's connections to outside uh, the country. And that was when, um, uh, because of these new, uh, like, protests and the movement, um, uh, what happened was the United States tried to help with Starlink, um, because... Starlink, uh, uh, Tesla's yes, internet. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, it's not um, effective in Iran, like, because, like, um, they don't have the equipment in Iran, like, uh, functioning, um, and... Uh, but like uh, that's the that's the biggest issue because uh people in iran they constantly do not have internet everything is uh filtered like uh or like they call it blocked um and they need to use vpns they constantly cut down the vpns so it's like a, a very um they are trying to limit people kind of like china uh, does too yes does yes is it a wealthy country? Is it do your people have have stuff? Is there like natural resources, coal, oil, stuff like that? So Iran is supposed to be a very rich country. Okay. Um, because of oil and gas. Um I think um but don't quote me on sure. that. Um uh, maybe you can do a little more uh research, but I think like Iran is the, the second uh, biggest natural uh, gas resources okay. uh, in the world, I guess. Uh, but I can be wrong. Like, but it's among the top ones. Um, so they are. It's supposed to be a rich country as it was before the 1979 revolution, but unfortunately, right now Iran is uh, facing a very harsh uh, economic uh, crisis. Okay. And uh, these past, um, I would say, 10, 15 years uh, have been very hard. And the past uh, five years have been crucial. Um, after the uh, Mahsa Amini um, uh, uh, revolution, um, the economic crisis um, has hit people so hardly that uh, in some cases, um, and this is the official uh, thing that the government, like the regime announced, and usually they like to make everything look better, but like they sure. announced that there was like a 70 something uh, percent uh, inflation. On 70 percent inflation. Yes, uh, on some uh, basic food items that people uh, uh, need. Yeah. And there were like some 200% uh, percent inflation on some other things, but like these 70 uh, something percent, in total, like it was 45% inflation. And these like 70 something percent was like on like things that people they need for their daily lives. Uh, the uh, the um, statics shows that like the amount of uh, protein that people are supposed to take, uh, it's one third of oh, yeah. what they what uh, they're they're actually they, able they to get. actually need to <laughs> need, and they they're, they they cannot even afford that one third that they are trying to get. So it's like it's terrible right is now. It, is it like tactical suppression? You think? Uh, well, um, it's. Um, they they the regime like always has this idea keep people hungry and you can yeah. rule yeah right yeah, absolutely right. um they don't care like they uh they are very good at blaming um uh sanctions blaming other things i personally like my my family i myself we were hit by these sanctions like like hugely yeah. um uh, but i personally believe that the the regime uh, loves to uh, have these sanctions because oh. they're benefiting from it. They always tell the world that like these sanctions were like terrible. They uh, they are killing our people. Like, but it's not them killing. Uh, it's not the sanctions killing people. It's them killing yes. uh, people. Their uh, politics, their uh, decisions, and uh, their love of power is, is killing people. Um, um, they like one very simple example is that when a uh, pandemic happened for example I, good I, I wanted to i wanted to get into that so when bit. pandemic happened uh the supreme leader of the country in front of the cameras said that uh it was forbidden to uh receive vaccines from uh the united states and united kingdom uh because these are the big enemies for sure. the regime 
um, they, they, he made the statement, he said that it is forbidden to take this. And we, like the, the country had uh, offers from these countries uh, for vaccines. They did not accept them. They even uh, returned uh, um, uh, some vaccines that they received from these countries. And then what happened was like a lot of people uh, died. Um, like it was it was ugly, like uh, for ugly, a couple ugly. of years, it was just like ugly. And what they said that they blamed like the same Supreme Leader blamed the United States for the sanctions, that the sanctions are the reasons that we don't have uh, we don't have not only vaccines, we don't have medication because right now, like we don't have medication in the country, like um, um, like just for penicillin and whatever else. Basic, just, basic yeah. things, basic things. There were, there Even were so here, there has been a lot of people saying they can't get the medications that they're oh, looking there's, for there's right ton. now. It's there's a, a ton, ton of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, I, one thing I, I really struggled with whenever it's COVID happened was there's so many, so many people in the States that when we had to wear masks and whether they did or didn't work and it was an effort to not, it was an effort to not spread. And it was one of the most collective things and you could, you could do it together and it feel like at least feel like you're making, making a difference. And there were so many people who were like, this is, this is almost like getting on a train to Auschwitz and whatnot. And it's like, are you, are you kidding me? The stuff, you, you know, and it was, I didn't necessarily, like I'm a healthy person. I didn't necessarily think I needed a mask or whatever else, but and people said they didn't work. But if we were sitting this close to each other and I sneezed, would you rather have me have a mask or not? <laughs> right? So uh, And I, that we didn't take this I time. I would spray you. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't take the time. We're locked down. I'm a little bit yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. We should definitely spray him. <laughs> Lysol. I, I've been Especially that he's sweaty. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> I sweat every time. I can't help it. I'm actually, I'm actually better. I'm actually not sweating. That's because so the air is blowing more right down is, on us. Yeah. I, we didn't take the time during this shutdown to teach people to eat well, oh to God. move their it was bodies. Such an opportunity it to was learn. such a good opportunity to teach people, you know, when you're stuck in the house, don't sit there and just eat junk food. Start eating some fruits that and was vegetables. Hard not to do that. Get get stuff. Get your body moving. Here, let's send out workout. Five, you know, five minutes to move your body. Something. Instead, we made people sicker. They were sitting at home and they were just eating junk food. And how many people during COVID had said they gained the COVID fifteen or the COVID twenty? Oh, yes. Like that was heartbreaking to yeah. see. It was absolutely terrible. Yes. And how many people you you gain five pounds a year basically your your entire life, and that just jump started like three four years at one at one time. Yes. Do you know how heartbreaking it is to learn that like your your base metabolic rate drops like a percentage every couple of years. That, <laughs> so yeah. for literally no reason, like you have to eat differently. You have to work out, you know, at a higher level to maintain this same body weight. Like it just yes. ha it happens naturally over time. Yes. Well, it's easy though. You just, you just exercise more calories than you intake, right? I mean, you can to <laughs> a certain <laughs> level. I mean, there are times that you have to like also refeed your body. You can't just live in a sure. caloric deficit all the time because your body rebels against that too. Mm -hmm. right. So you have to, you know, go back and forth. I know. That was, I was just joking. Uh, <laughs> but there are people that do believe that believe and then that, they really sure. harm their metabolism but. because they under eat constantly and their body is, you know, fighting for food in different ways. And what most often happens is we eat what? We binge. Yeah. After being restricted for so long, you're like, you know what? I see something, and then you eat a ton of it. Yeah. I I often will, will like I'm gonna start a diet tomorrow. I'm gonna snack real hard today, and I'll <laughs> because and then, I'm I, right? and then I don't start it, and then I just like have that snack food, and then I'm like, what? Well, then you the snack real hard the next day, and then yes. the next day, yeah, yeah. <laughs> snack attack. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about food in in Iran? You sure. What's your I'm traditional... a foodie person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what uh? What's your traditional? Um, what's a traditional meal? Do you want to ex do a traditional food exchange day? <gasps> yes. yes, that would be. Yes. All right. I I love food. So. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, rice uh, has like a, a like a big part in okay. our cuisine, okay. uh, and usually like a typical like Iranian um, uh, dish is uh, rice um, with. Um, like a stew, like a, a thicker stew, not like a uh, very like on warm. top of the rice or rice. Yes, on, the side. on top okay. of the rice. Yeah. Yes, that's uh, equivalent and to us eating like 
hot turkey sandwiches with gravy on it. <laughs> which is so, so, so yes, and then um, we we love saffron or like saffron, sorry. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, we use it in everything. We Saffron's use, are healthy. Um, what is it? It's Sour. a it's a it's a kind of spice like okay. it's like um like it has a very reddish uh kind of color, and uh, Iran is like a, a famous uh, like it has like a very good quality uh, saffron and um, so we love it in everything we okay. love it in rice we love it in uh, uh, dishes. We make tea with this, like, like okay. any, everything, right. everything. That's awesome. Yes, I, so it is, I would say that it is very healthy because like it's plant, yeah. it's a yeah. plant-based uh, thing. So, um, yes, like, and the, the stews that we make, usually it's a combination of fresh herbs and meat. Uh, is it traditional meat, chicken, beef, is it? Um, chicken and lamb are lamb. Uh, very uh, common. Beef? Um, yes, we do. Okay. We do eat beef. Uh, we don't uh, have uh, pork in the. Uh, oh, you don't have pork. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. But like lamb is huge. Like it's it's like the I think biggest. Uh, okay. Do you really? eat pork here, or do you not? Yes. Eat? I, yeah. do yes. Would um, you think of bacon the first time you had it? Oh, I had it before. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> These are those questions that I don't know. No, right. <laughs> no, no, but, but uh, yes, we, we don't have. Have you ever it. seen the sun? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, no, no, no. I mean, like, I also said that we don't have it uh, in, in that's the country. Right. Like, yeah. it, it was also me saying it. Right. But, like, like you, it's. Uh, I should say that it's not a very common uh, thing. Yeah. You, you won't see like, and um, I am not sure. Maybe it is not even legal to sell it. I cannot remember uh, exactly, okay. but maybe it is not even legal to sell okay. something with like um, religious uh, rules. Okay. Yes. Uh, drugs and alcohol. Um, alcohol has been forbidden since uh, the <laughs> 1979 revolution, okay. but. Uh, I will, uh, I promise you, like, you will find uh, alcohol in each and every house. Okay, <laughs> and, yeah, that's kind of how, uh, I, I mean, you're not going to keep people from, from drinking that even during COVID. And go the whole way back to the prohibition, people are, like, boiling boots and stuff like that and going blind yes. from poison alcohol. Like people that. also make, uh, like, um, drinks at home, yeah. like, they make wine, they make, uh, but, but. The thing is that, like, it is, like, forbidden, okay. but um, when um, 18, like, um, every year, uh, thousands of 18-wheeler uh, cars bring alcohol, alcohol to the country, <laughs> I don't think that it is something under the table, I think. <laughs> it has is there a tradition, like, drink of choice there or anything? Like, well, we, have, we have, like, Tennessee whiskey and stuff. Like Iran is the is uh, the place where Shiraz is, so Shiraz wine, like... Uh, oh, okay. Yes, Shiraz is in the middle of Iran. This this it's a city in the middle of Iran. The grape from there and the wine, Shiraz wine, is the famous wine. So it's been like that for I would say centuries. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Right. I don't know that. Yes. What, what's the what's the environment like uh weather Climate sort of uh, we have it. very different climates inside the country. Uh, okay. Like when it's like when we go, to, if we go to the north part of the country, um, it's um, very like here, okay. uh, green, humid, and uh, north west is very cold. Like it's like really like um, six months of the year. Like there's like ice and the snow and everything. Okay. Um, and it's like it has like mountains, and then it we, when we go to the middle. It's like a, a little mild, uh, so it doesn't have like those kind of uh, um, harsh winters, but it, it would have, they, they have like uh, warmer summers. Okay. Um, so middle and north, they have four seasons, but south part of Iran, it's like uh, two seasons and it's like a warmer uh, okay. climate. We have two seasons here too. If there's a yeah, construction yeah. season and winter, <laughs> <laughs> I was Fair. about to say that snow and ice, and then snow and ice. Right, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say we have four seasons in one week sometimes. You know? <laughs> yeah, also in true. one day, yeah. sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Was it hailing yesterday? <laughs> I don't. I, I, oh, yeah, I, I, left. I yeah. saw some hail yesterday. <laughs> I was out of the area before it hit, but we, when we were leaving. We could see like this wall. <laughs> we're like it's raining over there. That's crazy. Yes. Yeah, I have no idea. I was. In Indiana, and it poured 
and I got basically to the exit up here and there was nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I sat here and then like an hour later it hit here and I'm like, how did it, did it swirl back? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. um, let's talk about dating. What's dating life and like, life like? It's in? good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hit him far. So uh, it's, um, I, I would say it's a, uh, it's, it's a new like uh, kind of culture. Okay. Um, for for sure, my parents uh, and their generation like they didn't have this kind was of. Was it arranged uh, for them? Yeah. It That's... was kind of like they yes that generation is still and by the way my parents are seventy six and eighty two. Okay. Um, so right. yes, at that point like um, there was like some freedom in choosing uh, your partner uh, for life. But yes, a lot of uh, arranged marriages would happen, um, which I cannot say even right now, like nowadays it doesn't happen, but yeah. like um, it's very rare for uh, today. But I think like um, maybe like the generation after the revolution, like all of like all those generations, um, like dating is a, normal uh, norm in in life yeah. uh, it's forbidden by the regime uh, I'm, starting, I'm starting to not like this yeah regime. I'm really to... <laughs> welcome to the club <laughs> you get that bad taste you but, can't even date. what are you supposed to yeah, do and it was very dangerous like for example like even when i was maybe like a um teenager like uh, it was dangerous because like those same type of uh, people who uh, then started working as hijab police uh. like they were like um like um like they they are this um like kind of militia group like um authorities from the regime that they would like be all around and like they would stop people and uh, ask them if there was like a man and a woman in a car they would stop them uh, uh, and ask them what is the relationship um, and if you weren't related if you were not married and or related like they then you were you would be in trouble they would uh, take people to prison uh, they would they would lash people like uh, for um uh, for adultery, like they would, uh, they would arrest. So, them. how are you supposed to find a spouse to get married? Like that's a yeah, that that uh, arranged marriage. Uh, they based based just on, want arranged based based on their uh, the ideology. Yeah, the comedian uh, and actor Aziz Ansari wrote a book a handful of years ago called Modern Romance, and he he talked about some of the uh, countries and like even getting your picture taken taken to go on a dating website was oh no, 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 yes it winning. was yes of course i mean yeah. it would be very dangerous because then uh, like the uh, regime uh, authorities would find you um but i mean n even my generation i don't think that we were like that brave but like the generation after us and these are the ones that they are leading the massa uh, gina amini uh, revolution the woman life freedom revolution they are brave like they brave. Uh, you're not going to stop sex or alcohol in human nature <laughs> no and and then they they are brave in being themselves this sure. this is my yes. life i want to live it like this and i'm not going to let anyone to uh prevent me from living my life that's awesome and you get one shot like you yeah. get one shot at this yes. life and that's yes. it and if you're yes. not fighting for your own yes. authenticity yes then no one will. yes definitely and uh but yes um uh, they think it's good. It's very different from here, by the way. Uh, <laughs> yes. That's what, because, as, as he said, he's like, my my dad had a choice between two two women. One was too tall, one was too short, and then the third one was his mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so funny. But no, I mean, um, like, back at home, it's, like, a little more straightforward, I would okay, say. If I see a guy and the guy, like, I like him, he likes me, he says... Like, uh, are you interested? That is a date. Like, you yeah. you start dating. Right. It's not like very confusing yeah, or yes, complicated. Right. Good, good, good. <laughs> I mean, I would say like you don't send the text of, is this a thing or yeah, are yes. we just friends? <laughs> exactly. Yes. <Stop>. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, when did you learn English? 
Uh, when I was six, I officially started learning English okay. language. All right. And that's, it, is that pretty common to be everybody's like second language? Um, it is, it is, it is the foreign language that we study uh, in the curriculum okay. um, from grade, um, I, would, I think it's uh, grade three, uh, we start um, okay. uh, learning English language um, at school, but um, I mean, for sure, it's not like a very practical kind of thing. It's very common uh, for families to send their kids to um, extracurricular after school uh, English okay. Uh, courses. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, so English is uh, the um, common uh, second language okay. that uh, people learn. Cool. Cool. Tristan, you got anything? Do you have any any follow up questions? We've uh, I feel like we could so go we talked on for about hours and hours. Life in, I know, right? Life in Indiana. Have you experienced any like um, xenophobia or any kind of in this area? I know we there are a lot of people that have experienced like racism and they've experienced any of those things. Have you experienced anything like that? Um, not not really. Okay. Um, for sure. I mean. People are curious, uh, mm -hmm. like, and sometimes people can be curious in different ways. Uh, um, not necessarily everyone shows like their curiosity in the uh, same appropriate way. way. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. I get that. Um, but um, to be honest, like, n uh, no. Um, sometimes it's just like I feel like um, okay when I say first of all, it, it, like a lot of times when I say when they ask me where I am from. Uh, and I say I'm from Iran. Actually, they do not know what country I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, it's like it can be the pronunciation because like they are used to hear Iran. Iran. Yeah. Uh, so when like so that that's one thing or like. Uh, they really like don't know like where um, between Iran a is, rock so. and a hard place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, um, but um, like sometimes it can it. I understand that uh, if they are like if they feel a little intimidated or something like that it's from i i would say like how the regime in iran is trying mm -hmm. to uh show the world uh like this is us like we are enemies with everyone and like um we are scary it's like so it can be like from that but yeah. that that is that is true whenever you only see the negatives you you would you don't you don't think that the person you run into on the street the odds are they're bad yes yeah, so yes. Whenever, yeah. Yes. And I, th listening yes. to the the conversation with with tanko and whatnot in in yourself and other people you it's good to see you guys are pretty well received it's a, and whatnot or you don't you don't notice it or whatnot and i'm i'm curious whenever we do uh another interview with um um someone a foreigner that it's american born i want to see what I'm curious to see what they think too. I'm 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 uh, I'm not a foreigner that's an American born. That doesn't make any sense. But uh, <laughs> but I'm I'm curious. I want to I, I want to see the difference and whatnot. There. Yes. Um. It, it, like I mean, for sure, there were like things that like comparing to the whole experience that I have had in Indiana um, uh, and in the United States. I mean, these things they don't even count because, as I said, like sometimes people. Um, as you were mentioning, like it, sometimes it's like it's not even from being from another country. Um, people are not used to differences. Like mm -hmm. even like there can be like a, an American, hardcore American, yeah. and but from, for example, I don't know, from the middle of uh, the United States and come here and like different uh, and people would feel like a little awkward or like yes. a, a little intimidated yeah. Yeah. or just a, you that. know having a an accent a, yes. a lot of people don't know how to take it and yes. that's the one thing i noticed with with people in, yes. in this area yes. and they're like well i can't understand it's like did you ever think of just listening <laughs> just being quiet and just listening yes. and, yeah. and it's yeah. so cool because the one day Farsi said the word weird and I was like, please say that again. That is the cutest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. So I feel like you have to say it. Weird, weird. weird, weird. <laughs> and she said, I was like, that is the cutest thing I've ever heard. I noticed and, that some of your W's are pronounced almost like V's. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. we, we, we do that. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> and, and like the funny thing is that like um, 
sometimes like we we try to write farsi words with uh english uh, letters okay um and then uh for the v sound actually we use v instead of w okay. ah, <laughs> so it's like it is that makes sense. Sense. <laughs> we, we don't have we don't have that like strong w uh, mm-hmm. uh sound <laughs> yeah we have a very loud w <laughs> how many characters are there in your alphabet um 36 oh my gosh 36, <laughs> I, yeah. I think i forgot i think it's there. Like 20, i hope so <laughs> it's it's very hard and if you look at like mandarin it's okay now i need to check i forgot right. <laughs> if you look at like mandarin and different things and i'm like how do they tell but i guess we do it with our with ours anyways our our language had to have been hard to learn yes because like they're they're there like <laughs> for learning that would be yes. difficult well we have like um i think like a lot of uh iranians like we have like difficult pronouncing uh th mm-hmm. the so like we pronounce it the instead of the, the. <laughs> so well we pronounce it the or the yes yeah. yes yeah. it depends yeah. that's very true <laughs> yes it depends i i cannot i cannot find it so persian Yes, Persian, um, uh, Persian or Farsi, um, uh, both of them. They should be. I type my name instead of numbers. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just like. Is football the uh, sport of the? Yes, uh, football. Football. And yeah. it is. It is not American football. It's soccer. That yeah. we call it football. <laughs> so how um, how was your experience at IUP? Um, what do you do at IUP? Go. Uh, yeah. Okay, sure. Um, okay, let's forget about that. You guys, <laughs> it's either thirty-six or thirty-four. Okay. Ours is what twenty-six. Okay. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> um, um, it, sorry, it was just like funny because I used to teach Farsi language. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I came here as a student um, okay. uh, in 2016 uh, I came to do my master's degree and I finished my master's degree and then I continued uh, for my doctoral program okay. um, so I also uh, work uh, and I work in the Office of International Education okay. um, with a program that is um, one of the Fulbright programs uh, it is for international teachers. Say that word again, Fulbright? Fulbright, okay. yes. Um, Fulbright is uh, um, um, U.S. Uh, Department of State uh, funded uh, program. Okay. That's great. Um, yeah, so it's for international teachers. Every okay. year for one semester, we uh, have these teachers, uh, scholars, they come to, the, to IUP and they um, go for a professional development program. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I, like uh, actually a lot of um, people in Indiana uh, community, they are familiar actually with this program because they go to Indiana schools uh, mm-hmm. and uh, they have partner teachers and they get to interact with students, That's their great. families. So uh, a lot of people, they know about this program. <laughs> That's okay, awesome. Good. Yeah. Um, when you came to Indiana, is there was there a place where you could go with um, like minded people, like a, like an internet? There's a I know there's an international st- uh, student place in Indiana. Um, was it? Did you just like meet up with people you knew, or how did like how how did you? What was your first day um, like? Like that sort of. Oh my first day! Yeah. Oh, I have a very funny story about my <laughs> first day <laughs> because um, I came in January, right? And it was like snowing uh, that January. There was snow up to my knees the next day when I woke up, and I love uh, fried chicken. Okay. All right. And when I was uh, coming to the United States, I was like, that, "Oh my gosh, I'm going to the land of <laughs> KFC." Of food. <laughs> I was like, "The KFC came from this country," you know. <laughs> and uh, I just I, want to say, I'm really sad that that's what we're known for. <laughs> I love fried chicken. So I was like, I, I was determined to find like a KFC and have fried chicken, right? I did not have a cell phone. Like, I mean, I did not, sorry, have services on my uh, oh, phone. Okay. So when I was uh, in the library, like I Googled the place in snow. I walked, I got for sure lost and I was like going in a circuit. But I found this place and... 
Well, it was not the best KFC. <laughs> it, was, it was not the best fried chicken that I had in my life. Oh, that's well, amazing. <laughs> How about that? Maybe when we do the food exchange thing, we'll do fried chicken for you. Uh, yes, we'll please. We'll get someone to make it okay, for you. I, but, right. but you're making it yourself, right? <laughs> well, you're me, not, yeah. You might not make like, me. We don't want him to do we'll, it. We'll, okay. we'll get but somebody to Chase, okay. Chase apparently makes Chick-fil-A chicken, okay. so we're calling you out, Chase. Yeah. We know you watch right. it. Okay. Right. We'll pickle juice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a deal. Okay, good, 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 good. That's a deal. That was a pickle joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deal. I That's love pickles. I love pickles. I love too. I love you. Yeah, I don't know. Do you have any questions for us? No. Good. Yeah, let's keep it that way. We don't want, we don't want questions from Justin anyways. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think we'll wrap it up. We're going to do um, an event. I think we decided late July we might give it a little more give a little more time and I'd I'd love for you to I'd love for you to come and let people just introduce themselves, talk to you and whatnot and whatever questions they have. But I'm also gonna use that as a place where you can come and tell your story about the lack of like mental health help that you've had here and we're gonna try to write them down and we might do something where we read those just one day it's just like a Q&A or something something like that so we can give you guys an idea of what what uh, what we are lacking in, in, in our community and I'm really 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 pushing for the human library event that's I really really you, really want to do that do you know what a human library type event is maybe you can help mm, us with that I'm not sure that I know um, we want to get people from different uh, different cultures and we want to do it like speed dating so a human library is where you can go in and just like borrow a person and talk to them mm. about something but um, I th we think the best way to do it is like speed dating. We'll just have 10 or 12 people sitting and you get five minutes to talk to them. Then you move on and get five minutes to talk to them. And, move on. You and you get to, yeah, and you get to ex like share your experiences and yes. stories with people. Yeah. Interesting. And I, I, I think that'll be. We don't learn what people go through in different countries. We don't learn different people's struggles or what people that come into our country are struggling with unless we have hard conversations. Yes. And, and we have honest conversations. We have to go past that. Hey, how are you doing today? Oh, good. Bye. Yeah. We have to go past that and say, like, how are you? Give people the chance to actually respond and, and learn about different cultures. That's the only way we can do it. You know that they teach us in English uh, classes that when in the United States, they ask you, um, how are you doing? It's not a real question. So don't uh, spend time and explain. Just say, yeah. <laughs> just say good and uh, what about you? Yeah. Or like, just go pass. Yes, it's like good you. Yeah. I was watching a comedian today on TikTok. Funny you say that. And he's like, and this person had the audacity to really answer. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it's funny though. To really well, answer. Now we know. Yeah. Well, all right. I think that's about it. Thank you so much. I enjoyed uh, yeah, my good. time. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll do it again sometime. Uh, maybe something else, maybe a topic you have or something you want to talk about. Just approach us and we'll do it. And, and any it. women's walks that you were doing, yes. anything like sure. that, keep us notified. I and will. We'll make, I will. We'll help we'll make out. a post about it too sure. to see if yeah. we can get some yes. people to go. I know Trista is a very a huge supporter. I appreciate that. Women's rights, that was, for sure. Uh, that was mind-blowing, by the way. Like I never mentioned it to you, but like... For me, like to see that you knew about it and you were like so supportive about it and you wanted to support it was just like mind blowing to me. Well, I wanted to support you and that's something Thanks. I think is oh, making me emotional. It's something that's super important because um, we I've watched women in this country. We have a lot of rights and we're still fighting for rights. And then, you know, women in your country are just constantly getting things taken away from them. Yep. And um, I wanted yes. to support you the best yeah. that I could. Thank you. So. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Good. Always. Good. Good, good, good. Thank right. you, guys. Yeah, You're very you're welcome. welcome. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, love you guys. Love you, bye. Go outside. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>